If it's your first time here, I'm Ashley and I hope you're having a productive day. So today's video is another cook with me. Um, the title of this is Pasta Spaghetti, Pasta Spaghetti Sauce. Um, so in today's video, there's a couple things that we're going to be doing. I'm going to, to show in depth how I make my own homemade spaghetti sauce as well as at the end, I'm going to taste test it with whole wheat pasta, chickpea pasta, and regular white pasta. Um, and give my recommendation based on the macros that are in each one, on which one I think has the biggest, the best taste, but the healthiest. So that's what we're doing today. I am gonna get started by showing you the pasta sauce, because that's gonna sit in the crock pot for quite a while. So I wanna get that started. So that's where we're gonna get going. First, I have to ground the meat. I'm gonna use ground turkey. Um, this is ground turkey from, I wanna say it's from Aldi, but it's just the 99% fat-free ground turkey breast. So I'm gonna use that. The first thing you gotta do is get the pan started. I usually just put the meat in and it'll tell me when it starts to sizzle. Don't get take paper off. I'm doing two pounds. So what I do is when I'm done with this, and this is all cooked into the complete sauce, I'm gonna split it into essentially eight meals will come out of this. I'll take half the sauce and freeze it for future use and then half the sauce will be for tonight and for tomorrow lunch. So we'll get a lot of mileage out of the two pounds of meat. So I'm gonna let this go. I will show you um, the next step when it's done. Real quick, something like this comes in handy. It's a, a meat breaker upper. Oh no, that's my technical, technical term is a meat breaker upper. But this comes in handy for breaking up the meat. Um, you can get them anywhere. I actually got this at Menards, but um, you can get them at probably uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. I think even Walmart has them, but it comes in real handy for breaking the meat into the right size pieces that you want. All right, gang, we're back. My turkey is cooked. There's no more pink in it. I do like to strain it. Sorry for the noises. I like to strain it just to get any extra, you know, fat or liquid water that came out. Just got my colander here. And because I like my sauce to be thick. So first thing we're gonna do for putting it together is I'm gonna spray the pan. I just have some cooking spray here. I like to spray the I like to spray the ceramic so that it is easier to clean up later. Then I'm gonna add in my ground turkey. So while I'm adding some other things, I also I use two cans of diced tomatoes with basil, garlic, and oregano. So I'm gonna get those draining as well because I don't, again, don't want the sauce to be too thick. So I am gonna drain those. While those are draining, I'm gonna add one large can of crushed tomatoes. A can of tomato sauce. A can of tomato paste. I just use a knife to pull it out of the can. It's being extra stubborn today. Now I'm gonna add in the tomatoes. I'm gonna make sure these drain pretty well. And 
And now for the, the herbs and spices. I have seasoned this completely myself. So I don't use like a packet seasoning or anything. So I add just Italian seasoning pretty generously. I actually open the non-sifting side and probably add about a quarter cup. A little bit of pepper, maybe a teaspoon. I add some garlic powder, two tablespoons. I'm sorry, this is onion powder. <laughs> but I add about two, about a tablespoon of onion powder. And generous two tablespoons of garlic powder. And then I have this squeezed garlic, minced garlic. And then I add about two tablespoons of that. So we're gonna stir all this together to combine. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just like to get it somewhat mixed. I'll show you. Come over and I will show you. I just like to get it somewhat mixed. And then we're gonna pop the lid on this. And this is gonna cook on low for about four to five hours to give it time, to give it all time to come together. So I'll be back once this is done later today. Okay gang, it's time to check on my spaghetti sauce. It looks so good, smells good in here. See how it's nice and thick? That's because I drained the tomatoes. It'd be a lot thinner if I hadn't drained the tomatoes. So that's an important step. So I just wanna give it a good stir. And then I'm gonna cover it back up. Just leave it in the crock pot till it's time to eat. Yummy. Okay, gang, my spaghetti sauce is done, and now it's time for the taste testing of three different pastas. Now, I did get all rotini just because I thought it was cute to do them all the same, but I have 100% whole wheat rotinis. So this one has 200 calories per serving, 1.5 grams of fat, 41 carbohydrates with five grams of, of fiber and seven grams of protein. So let's taste this one first. I just have a tiny bit of spaghetti sauce in, with here, in here with it to taste it and just a few noodles. Mm. So I have a, I'm not a huge fan of whole wheat pasta. In general like I, I knew that going into doing this video that I'm not a big fan of it but I feel like with the spaghetti sauce it's not bad um, but that's a lot of calories for something that just tastes okay and so I I'm not sure If this, was, if this was, if this was my only option, I, I would eat it, but it's chewier, even when it's cooked long enough, um, and it just doesn't hold the sauce well, so it, the sauce doesn't really stick to it, so I have like a puddle of sauce that separate, you know, separate from the, the noodles. It just doesn't cling to it. So, um, I would, I don't dislike it, but definitely not a favorite. So the next one I have to try is uh, chickpea pasta. So this is chickpea rotini. Um, so it has per serving 190 calories, 3.5 grams of fat. So a little more fat. 
34 grams of carbohydrates with eight grams of fiber. So higher fiber, lower carbs, and has 11 grams of protein. So it has a little more protein to it. Now this is made with just chickpeas. By the way, all of these were prepared to based on the packaged directions to, to prepare them. So um, we'll give this a shot. I have had these before as well, um, but let's try it out with, with my sauce. complaints that I have. The sauce doesn't really stick to it. So you end up with, you know, very sort of separate products of noodle and sauce. So even though this has been in there, it doesn't even, let me show you, doesn't even look like there's really sauce on it because the sauce just seems to slide right off. I will say that this brand of chickpea pasta, this is the Berea chickpea pasta has a stronger chickpea flavor than the Bonza um, brand. I do like the Bonza better, but this is, this is fine. I do prefer this, even with a stronger chickpea flavor, I do prefer this over the whole wheat. So, now it's time for just some good old fashioned Semolina Protini Pasta. So, you know, the first difference right away is that the pasta sticks to, or the sauce sticks to the pasta. I'm not sure why that is compared to the other two, but it just does. the stats. So this has 200 calories per serving, one gram of fat, 42 grams of carbohydrates with two grams of protein or two grams of fiber and seven grams of protein. So not much different than the whole wheat. So trying all three of them, thinking about how they taste, I would definitely say you don't get really any extra nutrients other than a little more fiber from the whole wheat pasta and it tastes completely different so i definitely for me don't recommend i don't recommend the whole wheat if you're gonna buy whole wheat pasta you might as well just have the regular because it tastes better because the well hi bailey's making an appearance because she wants to try some pasta too um but you're you buy this and it's about the same as this and this tastes so much better so for me this is definitely a no it's not worth it now getting to the chickpea pasta is a little I feel differently about the chickpea pasta than to do the whole grain now this has a lot more fiber and quite a bit less carbs than the regular pasta so almost it has eight grams of carbs less per serving and it has six grams of fiber more per serving. And then the protein, this has four grams of protein. So what I would say here is for things that have like a, a heavy flavored sauce, so spaghetti, fettuccine alfredo, things that have a, just a, a good sauce flavor, go, go with the chickpea pasta. You're getting more benefit, a little less calories, a little less carbs, a little more fiber and a little more protein compared to the regular. You're getting more of those things and the flavor's good. I would not recommend this if you're just doing butter noodles or an olive oil sauce. I feel like that you would taste the chickpeas way more and it would take away from the simplicity of the flavor of the sauce. 
So that's when I would recommend using the chickpea pasta. And I would stick with, if you don't like chickpeas or you don't like chickpea pasta, I would stick with the regular. It, it, this, the whole wheat just doesn't pack enough difference for it to be worth the change in flavor that you get. Um, this, I would definitely recommend a regular pasta for butter noodles, for light sauces, um, so that it doesn't take away from the flavor of your sauce. So, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I, I appreciate you stopping by today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I upload two videos a week on Mondays and on Thursdays. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.